Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Topic of discussion is money and football. How to earn money, why is she trying to make it, why is she in the trenches. The best thing to do first is um, be a student to the game. Learn, be a value and learn. So that could be learn how to be a coach and then coaching all those people. That could be being being a PT or like because as a aspiring football player, especially 18 and over, you need to learn. You, you should know how to do your gym exercise. You should know by then, you should know like, what type of gym exercise that's specific to sports that you need to do. Yeah. Um. If you're really into like mentorship or psychology, blah, blah, and people are saying, oh yeah, you should be a life coach or whatever, you should try to go into that and, like as, at the end of the day, as long as you're advertising yourself in social media or word of mouth or whatever, if you need to, do a free trial session, like a 30 minutes taste of testing or a PT or coaching to show people what they're capable of. That's that, that's what it needs to be. Do you know what I mean? Or if you start off like charging ten pounds an hour and work your way up to like fifty pounds an hour over time, if that what needs to be done, that's what needs to be done. For more age categories, male, female, um eight years old to twenty one years old, whatever coaching ages you want to do. Um and at the same time, you can study as well, um, like a one-year course or like a part-time course where you come in one, two, one, two times a week to kind of expand your knowledge of the game, um, whether it be coaching or psychology or whatever. Um, and then at the same time, once you've earned the right and you've earned certification, then you can like charge more because then you become a, a qualified member of the when it comes to like the knowledge of the game, if that makes sense. When I was asking my teammates what jobs do they do in football, many of them were saying that they are working in schools. So working as a, as a school teacher or as a, as a vicar, you know what is vicar? Yeah. Yeah, vicar school teacher. So like, for example, some uh, some physical activity coach, like that you that you just, just get the... One hour in this school, then three hours in other school, and then eight hours in other school. So that's how the most of them were earning money. Mm, so like <laughs> that again, I've got a teammate that does like the community college. Um, so he does like Everton Community College, Liverpool Community College, and like a foundation football college thing. Um, and he goes again. He goes to schools as well, after school clubs, um, and physical education classes as well and um, teaching kids different sports and like a different age groups but mainly primary school and he goes to like different schools um every day and he spends two three hours with the blah blah, blah and then he goes like different <laughs> schools and, and, and it's part-time hours so you, you don't ideally you want to have a job that is the least physical and mm. has the less strain on your body, both mentally and physically. You don't want to be in a job where like it's mentally draining and be something that you enjoy and see something that uh, relates to the sport because you teaching people about that, it's a leadership skill. So um, that's my advice. And you don't want to do any, any jobs that is strenuous in your body, like working in a warehouse, picking, picking boxes, this and that. It's just... It's mentally draining and physically draining and you're only putting your body in so much strain that is unnecessary and it's going to hinder your performance as well. Mm, I would also say choose the jobs where you can work when you want, ideally, or at least when you can tell when you want want to work. Like there are many jobs in, in shops, for example, where where you can speak to the manager and say, hey, sorry, mate, but uh, on, on weekends I'm out because I have games. Mm-hmm. So like uh, I have training sessions in the evening, so I can work uh, eight hours from eight to sixteen. Mm. That's what I would say as well, because football can happen, especially if you're on form 
if a club goes out, we need to be on trial, blah, blah, blah. You need to have the relationship and the the flexibility in your work contract to kind of be like, okay, I can let them know in a week's in advance or, or okay, I can pick and choose my shift um, every weekend, but the next week I can pick my shifts and then they can do that. So yeah, that's a really important point, having a, a flexible time job. And obviously, if you can do part-time hours, great. If you're financially struggling, and you're wanting to do full time hours at forty plus hours, then pick wisely what type of jobs that you can do that's not going to be strenuous in your body. Yeah, that's one thing we discussed uh, before: is how many hours per week of work can affect our football. And like, I think we both went to conclusion that more than thirty hours per week is affecting your football performance. No, more than that, this is. Uh, uh, too much yeah it's too much <laughs> especially when that when you play football you need to understand you also you're also stressed not only before trainings after trainings as well before games after the games your body your mind is still thinking about what happened in the game mm. so uh, yeah 30 hours i would say it's max try to maximize the amount of money that you can get paid for for one hour of your job mm-hmm. So uh, also also important thing is to keep the money. So like don't go to to a job where you have to travel two hours to get there because yeah. you will have to spend your own money to travel there. So like and be wise. So, as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I would say like you've hit the nail on the head. You want to work for a job where you get and pay the max amount of um, money per hour and work the least amount of time. Mm. That's the idea scenario. But again, you're only going to find these jobs by being a value and an asset to the person. So like I said, start at 10 and then work your way to 50 and be create value, be qualified in something in the game. Whether it be, like, for example, for you, Patrick, you... you and your UEFA C course. I uh, like I said, you can start, you can work towards doing the UEFA B or whatever, and then once you've got then UEFA B, you can get most coaching jobs. Um, you can do one to one sessions, whatever it may be. So that's that's really ideal, and that's what I would say. Um, for the youngsters, especially eighteen to twenty one, um, and then anything over, you should know what's your gift and what's your asset and what's your you on what you what's the thing that you're good at that you do outside of football one controversial thing that i will say now say now is you get paid per hour of work for the minimum amount of work you can do per hour not maximum and like many times when i was working in shell station i had at, especially at the beginning i had the ambition I had the ambition to work hard to show the manager that I'm the hardest worker, but I still get the same payment. And like, if your goal is not to be the best shell worker on the planet, then you don't need to give your best in job. Like you just do the bare minimum. It's it's like, uh, mm-hmm. it's a controversial one, but uh, if you want to be a football player, you need to prioritize football. And if you have some physical job, because you couldn't find any other. Don't give your best. Controversial, but but true. Don't give your best. Do the bare minimum just to get paid. Yes and no. Because it depends if the salary is a fixed rate or not. So for example, say in retail jobs, it's gonna like shell station or whatever, Tesco, whatever, they're gonna be a fixed rate for the rest of your life. Then obviously those are the ones who just do the bare minimum just to get away with it and keep yourself taken over of course right sit in the toilet for two hours whatever yeah. you need to do right stack shelves so slow whatever you need to do right let's say it's the commission based work or it's a performance based work or um it's a coaching job where it's one to one where it depends on how many clients that you get in then the game changes. Mm. Then it's a, it's a job where it's performance-based because the business that you're trying to do grows by the quality of product that you can provide and the service that you can provide. 
and um, obviously that's how the business goes through word of mouth. If by word of mouth, people are saying this guy's minimalistic, it doesn't really give you the time of day, then you know what I mean. Then you're not gonna get the recurring clients coming in, and you're not gonna have that client attention. Um, so it really depends on the job, to be honest. If it's a more of like a retail job and you're just a number and you're either replaceable, I completely agree. But if it's a job where you can where you can maximize hours based on your performance and based on commission, and obviously just give your best and what you can. Um and that's one way over the years you can maximize how much you earn per hour and then you can reduce your hours. As a football player, you should uh... Be careful with the performance-based jobs because most importantly, you need to pe- perform on the pitch. And like it's it's just mentally impossible to perform in job in football. Then if you have a relationship, you also need to perform in the relationship. So just it, mm-hmm. it's impossible to to perform, perform, perform all the time. You need a time to to wind down, to calm down, to rest and uh, and rest your mind because. Uh, Many people are not aware that uh, that the mind is is uh, needs to recover as well, especially that uh, mm. that you see in now nowadays many adults are on caffeine all the time, so they just lie to themselves that they are okay. I'm good. I can work harder. I can work hard. More coffee. I can work hard. More coffee. But uh, in reality, they mm. are just just fucking their body from the inside. I hundred percent agree. And I think that's why we, me, me and you said like the best street part is between 20 to 30 hours. Don't do any more than that. Yeah. It's pointless because you're never giving yourself that rest day or whatever. Um, the ability to wind down, ability to kind of have time to kind of meal prep or um, analyze your game or ability to do mental training, like visualization, meditation, this and that. Ability to journal, ability to kind of spend time with the one-on-one coach or your SNC coach to do private sessions or ability to kind of like if you're filling up your time with so many things then you're spreading yourself thin so I 100% agree like that's what I said like you do the least amount but the highest amount to pay and live below your means it's that one until you've earned the lifestyle live below your means Um. Like a budget as well. People, a lot of people don't know how to budget or save, um, and that will save you a lot of hassle. Because say if you get a trial, like I don't know, Slovakia or Serbia or whatever, or Thailand Premier League, whatever, and you need to catch the next flight. You need to have enough money saved up in order to catch that flight next week. Do you know what I mean? Because that's how quick football works, especially if you're spending hours and hours networking on LinkedIn or whatever. So that's really important as well. One thing I want to mention uh, is, I'm not sure if it was a true story, but uh, probably have seen it, but Van Persie spoke to Ryan Babel about, uh, like they were driving a car and uh, the Ryan Babel said, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to buy five apartments and this will set me up for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will earn my, much money. And Van Persie said, you know what I think? I think if you work on your left foot, you can earn much more money. So that's uh, that's like the the thing that uh, football players should have in mind. That okay, yeah, I have a job. Don't think about uh, about investing your money or or doing uh, some other risky things. Just just improve your football. That will give you the mm. most most return. Improve mm. your football skills. This will this will make your overall situation much better. Treat your football career as a project. You're the project Mbappe, right? So, like, invest in it as much as you can psychologically, left foot, right foot, SNC coach, get a mentorship, get, get someone that can guide the right way to give you the right blueprint, invest in, like, I don't know, networking or someone that, whatever it may be, do whatever is necessary to maximize your potential and increase your probability and chances of making it. That's what you need to do, and that's what your main focus should be. But you need to use the one and a half to maybe two hours on the training pitch as good as possible. So, like, don't go there just to do the work. You need to 
maximize the same amount that you the same thing that you want to do with the money that you want to maximize the amount of money that you are getting paid per hour the same thing you do on the football pitch that you need to maximize the amount of progress you can make in this one and a half or two hour session never waste a minute of training i always say that because you mm. never know that could be a last training session because yeah. a bus you can cross the road the bus might hit you or some idiot could snap your legs you never know when your last training session will be so it's all about perspective and maximize most trainers at uh, the train as much as possible because you a you never know the status of where you're at in the team b you never know um like i say every week um your credit in the bank is reset if that makes sense you need to build enough credit in the bank for the manager to be like right i'm starting him on the weekend type of thing and obviously if you perform on the weekend obviously you're gonna start the next week with a plus in your credit in your bank and then build credit build credit build credit build credit build credit and then if you start next week okay you're the week after you'll start with the plus in your credit in your bank, right? So if you don't start or you or you're on the bench and you don't come on, right? You are starting the next week with minus in your credit in your bank. So you need to work double into better in order to kind of go from a minus to a plus in your credit in your bank. That's how I view things. One thing that I want to mention now is uh, many players try try to be cute with the training, with their preparation, with the uh, mentality. And like, you need to understand that if you work a normal job and then you train, your likelihood of becoming a professional football player are not high. <laughs> they are extremely mm. small. They are even smaller than a person that is not doing the, not playing for a professional team, but at least he's not working. So you mm. need to understand that if you go to normal work, you're the underdog. And the odds are against you because there are thousands of players in the world that they have time to relax before the session and just slowly build the focus on it. And if you're the grinder and you have to grind in the morning and then you have a session in the evening, you need to understand the odds are against you. And also be mindful if, you, if you're going to take these odds or not. Because uh, many players are just delusional. They think that if they work hard every every if every day in the job and then uh, do their bare minimum on the training session they will become professional football players but re mm -hmm. realistically you have players in your age that are being coached by the best coaches in the world and all they have to do is just to come on the session because everything is prepared for them including the gym program including the nutrition it including the supplements including the mm -hmm. massages Everything. So the odds are against you if you work a normal job. hundred percent. I don't know about you, Pastor, but how many times have you gone on trial and you went, I do not look at a place. I'm competing. But the manager says, you're a good player, but you're not better than what we've got. Mm. Because they've got an emotional investment in them. They've invested in them in, in for years and years. The players are on a contract and they're thinking, why would I invest in someone that hasn't got a name for himself type of thing? So they don't want to take that risk. The amount of times that's happened, I can count it more than in my hands type of thing. So this that's why I, I agree with you. Like, they're training full-time and you're in a part-time team. What are you doing to kind of make up for the, um, the lack of training? What are you doing? In, uh, in what facets are you out training them, out working them, um, out resting them, um, out learning them? So when you get that chance, you're going to be out competing them. Not just competing, out competing them, blow them away, type of thing. Um, leave them no choice but to sign you, type of thing. Um, so that's, that's the one of the advice that I'd give to players. Well. Imagine. Do you think Real Madrid uh, player is coming on a training session? Oh, my joint hurt. Ah, okay, I will get through the session. Bro, they are 120% every day. 120% every training, every situation, every tackle. 
That's why they leverage becomes much higher because they improve better after each session. And if you're at 60, 70, 80% on the session, you, you don't improve as fast. So like just one thing, just be mindful that the odds are against you. How are you going to use the, the hours to outcompete, as you said, the other players? And like you said, don't get into a habit where you're performing 70, 80% all the time. That that becomes your 100% now. I mean, Patrick, that's what me and you, that's one of our biggest mistakes. Like, you're working, you're doing this, you're doing that, do, 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 do. and it got to a point where our 60% was our max performance. Like, that's our max performance. That's all we could give because we were exhausted. Um, and then... The man is that mm, good player, but it's just not consistent. Good player, but you just need that final X factor. A good player, but we don't have the 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 freshness, the match freshness, the the, the freshness to perform kind of thing. Um, when you're tired, one thing people need to realize: the freshness is where the creativity comes from. That's where your your flow zone comes from. That's where. But if you don't have that freshness, bro, you're just going through the motions. You're just letting training pass through you. And then I think, wow, it's training finished already. I haven't even performed. Oh, wow, the training finished already. Oh, that was a dead training session. Oh, wow, like, uh, training finished already. Oh, I have done it. I just kept it simple. I kept it cute. One time that's happened. Now looking back, I can understand. But I was in uni, I was working, I was doing this. I had a mental coach, I had this SNC coach, I had this, I had that. I was trying to visualize. I was like, oh, I used to always think myself, I was going for a club that at the time I wasn't driving. So I was traveling a few hours there, two hours back on the train. And then I was thinking about money, about the train. There is like one story that I have in my mind all the time. I played uh, against the uh, Elite Serie team in Norway. And there was a guy that was uh, first one in the dressing room before the game. He was doing all the stretches in the world. All the stretches, okay, mental preparation, okay, okay, let's do this. Pumping himself uh, like way one and a half hour before the game, he was already pumped up, okay, I'm going, I'm going to perform, this is my chance. Bro, he's coming in the match and he's dead. And like, it, it does, and you can look at this in the day perspective. It doesn't, nobody gives a fuck what you did. Two hours, mm. three hours, eight hours, 24 hours before the session. What matters is what you do in this one and a half hour on the pitch. This is mm. all that matters. Everyone looks at it. Like nobody looks at the world from your eyes. And nobody cares, to be honest, if you worked hard or not. If you drunk a beer before the game or not. All all people care about this is the performance when they look at you. Uh, and I agree with you. And I can like you said, Patrick, people use these strategies because A, they're underprepared and B, they're under-recovered. That is it. How many people you see, oh yeah, I need to jump on normal techs, I need to jump on this, I need to, to do massage guns, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, you must have done something and you, you've not probably not been sleeping well all week. You've overworked yourself, blah, blah, blah and you've not managed the workload. Mm. It's not right. It's like keep it simple, get the basics right, and perform and stay fresh. That is it. That's my advice. But as I said, let's move on to now how to earn the money, how to use the money uh, in order to maximize your pro potential. You need to have the guidance, you need to have a coach. So, uh, this, uh, like we have uh, we have same friend uh, called Isaac and a uh, few few weeks ago I saw he posted something about that even though he's a professional coach and like he's a great coach he still has his own coach and like mm. imagine the audacity you need to have to say that you don't need a coach to help you become better bro this is uh, he gave some story about uh, oh I don't remember about some mechanic or something that imagine your car breaks down on the street and you say to there is a mechanic and you say no 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 I fix it myself bro mm. like you, you need to you need to have the guidance so you need to make sure that uh, you 
earn money so you are able to afford the coach that you at least visit at least once per two weeks okay i will not say once per mm -hmm. week but at least once per two weeks so he can check check your progress check how you are doing mm -hmm. and uh, strategize the the next coming weeks for you mm -hmm. 100% um, what i would say to that is like don't underestimate the network connections the coaches has I'm a, I'm a firm believer, obviously, networking works, LinkedIn, all that, sending emails work. But the best network is through the people that you know. That's the best network. Um, because that is completely opposite to cold calling or um, cold emails or whatever. So that's my advice. As well as that, it's like you're investing in the blueprints. That's what the mentorship is. It's the fast track. So you don't have to go through all the mistakes that other people went through. I, like, like yeah, I was reading a quote the other day, it was saying, don't be hard-headed. A good person learns from their mistakes. A wise person learns from other people's mistakes so they don't have to go through it themselves. That's what you invest in a coach for. Because at the end of the day, football is such a short career to the point where you don't have time to waste. You need to think about maximizing efficiency so the chances work in your favor. I'm a football coach myself, okay? And uh, I imagined a scenario what I would do if there was a broke a broke person that is coming to me and saying that, Patrick, I, I really cannot afford your session. I'm willing I'm willing to learn from you as much as possible, but I, I can do whatever it takes, but I just don't have the money. Do you know how you could uh, be able to help me? Bro, I would help this person. So like, even even to give some free tips for free. So uh, I would say, have the negotiation skills to speak to to mentors, to, to coaches, to just say, to explain to them if you're broke, that really mm. I, it's a tight situation for me. I'm willing to to pay for one session per two weeks, but please could we keep in touch for for one day a week as well to to mm. have some blueprint from you to keep mm. uh, keep in touch to learn learn more from you. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. And as well, you never know if he likes it or if he thinks you're a person of value. He might fire you as a subordinate. You never know. Mm. So, like I say, you, you, if you don't ask, you don't get. That's, that's one thing I believe in as well. Um, another thing that you need to invest in and, and budget, I've mentioned it a little bit last time, in case you need to go and travel to a different city, in case you need to get a hotel at a different country, uh, or the, uh, and get a flight or whatever. You need to have money stacked on the side, on your savings, just in case. Just in case for a trial, just in case things go left, just in case you need to get a private scan if you get injured and, uh, and you're in a... <clears throat> Not in a professional club, you're in a semi-professional club, so the club can can only sponsor you half the money. Um, in case you need a scan or you need a, a, an emergency surgery, and um, obviously public health, you know, you know, if you do your ACL, and especially in in England, if you NHS, they're not gonna touch it till like three four months down the line, and that's a, a that will affect your career massively massively and um, so recovery window being able to kind of get um, a consultation if you're injured or rehab or anything like that you need to have money stacked just in case anything goes left or um for emergency or anything like that or and for trials yeah but then uh, there are many people that uh, don't save money because they rather investing and I like understand the, the perspective that, of course, it's better to invest the money than to let it sit in your bank account and just have less because of the inflation. But uh, if you think realistically, like what can give you the bigger benefits, like spending thousand dollars on a trip to Slovenia on a trial where you have a big chance to, to make it or to put it in crypto, where it might go up or it might go down or it might stay the same for a long, long time. It depends if you're full in 
if you're hundred percent into football player, like we spoke about that before uh, in other podcasts, you want to be a football player or you would like to be a football player? If you want to be a football player, probably you go full in, full in, mm. and you don't look back. So uh, no investment, just save money. When it's enough, take the trip because you listen to us, you're prepared. Mm. You nail it, get the contract, leverage much higher. Of course. High risk, high reward play though. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all football is. High risk, high reward. But again, like I say, um, that's only possible if you live below your means. That's only possible. If you're thinking, ah, when I, I'm, uh, I'm going to go to a restaurant once a week. Ah, I'm going to go out with the with the boys, blah, blah, blah. And you're splashing major cash. Oh, like, I'm going to go out, uh, like, at a restaurant with, I don't know, or, or with my girlfriend or whatever, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking. Do you know what I mean? Like, you need to spend wisely. Um, either you're all in, like you said, or you're not. Um, yeah, bro, and, and like, I want to make people understand, like, me and you, for example. Me, myself, last year, I have been in a restaurant twice. Once with my brother, once with my mom. They both paid for me. So like it's this is this is how low living below your means means. Like you yeah. you need to you need to take the sacrifice. It's part of the game, bro. It's part of the hustle, it's part of the journey. Now that's not gonna I'm not saying that's gonna be your destination. I'm not saying that's gonna be your final destination, but um, in terms of your current situation, but if that's what needs to be done in order to get to leverage your career, let it be. Just bite your teeth and just let it be. And like I say, if football is all you know and football is all you want, then that's what that's what is necessary in order to make that step. So in summary, just don't be cute. Don't think that uh, if you put your football shoes, uh, go on a football pitch and... Uh, do some extra free kicks, you will be a football player. Don't think that if you go to work and work hard every day for the last uh, three months and earn the money, but then uh, spend everything on uh, crypto, on investment, that you will be a football player. And then you don't have time to to be uh, 100% focused on the football session. I say, um whatever all your actions has got to be intentional towards the love of the game um you wanting to make it it's all about intent and agency that's all it is intent and mm-hmm. agency if you have that towards football and every action that you do you have to ask yourself is this going to benefit my game is this going to benefit my game is this blah 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 and you just gotta outweigh the pros and the cons if the action is more pros that is going to work in your favor then do the action and that's it yeah because we have last minute of the podcast i can give a strong tip to the people that stayed with us until the end conor mcgregor one of the greatest uh, ufc fighters of all time Mm. for seven years he was on government support his girlfriend was working full-time job she was cooking for him he was living below his means for seven years on a on the government support and just spending everything on a on the gym membership just so he can just so, so he can train in the gym like in gym mm. i mean the the ufc uh, octagon mm. so all the money all everything he did not work a single day in the job just because he had a government support and he, he used this money to support his uh, biggest goal and that's to be the ufc champion how much he wanted Bro, you want it hundred percent, or you just just that uh, would be nice. Like they say, action speaks louder than me. So go and get it, guys. Sacrifice, show how much you want it and how much it means to you. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one. That was a good clip. If you want to see more, check out this one.